OCS. This is game two between Greg Shaw and Steve Baroni. I believe Greg is up by 10, is that right? 10 force, that's right. 10 force. Yeah, okay, so we see Greg playing No Idea versus Steve playing ISB. ISB, and it looks like he's playing the same space ISB list. Yeah. Um, since he's not small points and indoor shield that we've seen uh, Steve play for several months now, and is also the deck that Greg played yesterday when he beat Steve. So how do you feel about this matchup? It's interesting. It's going to be a long game. Uh, for sure going to be a, a pretty big grind. Um, I think that there's a decent shot that... Oh, sorry, I just want to point out real quick that Steve is actually playing... Um, it, it, this looks like a list that is obviously not playing slip sliding away. Um, he started this course on system instead of the oh, type. Interesting. Also, no which I think, Yeah. Um, well, he didn't start Decree because he really can't. Um, in this list, yeah, I'm sure he probably has a decree that he's floating in the deck, but you really, you know, he's pretty locked into these starting effects. He needs to be a rest order to get a docking bay that he could put P it at to pull Merrick, and then obviously mobilization points is you know the key to everything to pull the executor that he wants to play free. But you like this better than starting the square that and playing slip sliding away. I think it's it's interesting. I mean, slip sliding away obviously gives you a couple more force. I mean, a downside of ISB. Before subsiding away, is always it's subpar activation. But, I mean, decks are learning to really attack that 2-0 site. I mean, R2 makes it an easy place to attack. Obviously, no idea. Has infinite spies. You can drop there to drain. So, if Steve put Greg on something like no idea or legend, where he thinks it might be kind of like a, a long game and a slow grind, um, he'll probably figure he can make up this lost force throughout the game. And then the system is obviously significantly easier to defend. Um uh, though he's, you know, in the long term, the system might actually be more problematic um, because Blount uh, can hide on a ship there, and of course, no idea is going to have Blount deal with. Yeah, Tantive with Blount, of course, on system is going to be really tough for Steve. Yeah, so I think that that's the downside of it versus no idea. I think not playing slip sliding away and playing the two is a, is a, not a bad call in this slow space version versus Throne Room and Legend. I mean, obviously, ISB got so powerful with subsetting away because they could also put Mock Gideon at that 2-0 and unload a handful of guys, but the space version doesn't do that. Yeah, notably, this will not be affected by the errata, this version of ISB, at least. That's right. That's right. This is basically, I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, it has a Gideon, but in this deck, the Gideon would actually, you know, go there anyways, so. Yeah. Um, so. Okay, so we see Pia... Pull Meridurik, go to, they both go to the Executor Rocking Bay. Yep. Posting that we're live real quick. So we assume he's playing Bestman System and probably Kashyyyk, and then Executor with a free effect. Yep. Um, he probably doesn't need to bother with Kashyyyk. I mean, he might need Kashyyyk possibly for activation, though as you can see, he's already, you know, he's up to his activation in decent amount here by controlling the Docking Bay and having Bestman out. Um... And so he probably doesn't want to be a three-system game. His best shot... So no idea is going to want to go pretty quick. Um, this ISB big blue deck is a little slow, especially to the ground. So Greg is going to want to probably grab Stardust, get to the beach, and start you know draining for two and pinging for... Well, it'd be pinging for two until um, until Steve can find his decree. And so that, you know, especially with that extra ping from Stardust, that's a pretty strong motivation for Greg to go <coughs> to the ground. Sorry. And so probably the long-term plan for Steve is obviously going to be to, you know, set up that free executor, have a pretty strong space presence. And then he's going to need to probably attack Greg in space. And so he won't want to play a third system because he's going to want to try to keep the action concentrated between Scarif and Bespin, especially because Scarif is already going to be a drain too anyways, if he doesn't start playing. Yeah, it doesn't seem like Steve is going to have a lot to contest the beach. So that's probably just going to be a drain of two all game for Greg. Yeah, um, I think, you know, prob it, normally in this big blue deck, you see, um, you see like Blizzard 2 and Veers as sort of a the strong ground package. But it's not going to be good against No Idea. I mean, No Idea, if it wants to hold the beach, No Idea can hold the beach. It yeah. can, it's going to get four or five. You know, cheap, high forfeit dudes. Once he flips, he has protection from trample. 
Um, you know, a couple destinies from Beers is not going to be a big difference if he's facing down 20 plus power and then attrition bonuses from Saw or Leia. Yeah. Um, and we should note, by the way, that obviously no one here has been on Oh, there's Mike. Different. Yeah, and that um, as of Wednesday, you can safely trample again. Uh, you there, Mike? I, I am. Ooh, you don't you sound rough, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. I, for some reason, thought it was uh, starting at 9.30. Uh, it was between 9 and 9.30, so they worked some of the time. They hopped on at 9. Well, here I am. Good morning. All right, we well, haven't yeah, much. Just, um, the, the most noticeable <laughs> thing is that Steve did not start subsiding away the just starting the Coruscant system. Yep, so this is basically what Steve has played for the majority of the last few years, honestly. Yeah. Um, yeah. And basically, I think it's it's an interesting meta call. I, I don't hate it, not starting subsiding away by not giving up that 2-0 site. And, and so if he was facing Throne Room or Legend, I think it'd be really good. I think, unfortunately, it's no idea. It might be... Oh, that's interesting, though, if we see Tantive go to Scarif. Yeah. That is it. He probably just wants to flip. Well, I don't know. You probably want your ship pulls there. Well, also, um, well, this is a strong setup. Also, keep in mind that he still has Rogue One, which could deploy to Coruscant. I think. Or he might have Rogue One. Yeah, most of the list of Rogue One. His most can... recent list, I don't think, had Rogue One. Yeah, some lists do, some lists don't. Um... Okay, so you see him pull. Don't do that again. Does suspend mod <laughs> points. Yep. Uh, Kill two activation. Off. Yep, very strong play. It's a pretty good setup. It's going to be really hard for Steve to do anything about Luke and Tantive with only 8 force. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, I think, obviously, um, Greg would pull the beach if the beach was there. Um, presumably, the beach wasn't there. And so, his, you know, since he, he knew that on the insurrection, when he searched with insurrection... So he probably thought to himself, well, I can either draw a bunch of cards to try to find the beach, or he can just go ahead and set up Tantive, which he wants to play anyways at some point. He'll get back some activation over the next few turns, get Luke out, and then since he spent or drew all his force, he's guaranteed to find it. Although, can he even make it to Coruscant with Tantive? Um, no. Tantive can't make it to Coruscant. Yeah, so, so our point... now... Yep, Black can go to the docking bay now, though. So. Yeah, okay, so it doesn't matter. Um, but, I mean, no idea lists generally have four or five ships. Um, you know, if you have Han Chewie and the Falcon, that can get there from that. So. so we see... Uh, oh, so now we see the Miss going to leave this city, so we'll probably see the... Obviously, we'll see the Executor, which already pulled. And so now he'll occupy... The system again and can decide if he wants to split up some guys between the system and the um the site to keep his activation up. You could probably just you probably leave Mer well, I don't know. I guess no idea you probably don't want anybody at the docking bay by themselves. Um yeah, you wouldn't want to leave them by themselves. I mean a the thing about no idea is while it has a million spies, it doesn't necessarily have great beatdown potential. Um you have I guess Bayes can shoot a gun, but it wouldn't be the worst situation if nobody have dropped three guys and then you lost a few forks, but they lost all their guys there. They were stuck their guys there. But Steve is playing it safe by um, the American key at the docking bay. And we see with Free Ride that Blizzard 2 was revealed. Um, so we do know that that could be Steve's option for both. Yeah, if only it was an ATS team. <laughs> yes, Greg makes a joke that that was close. Um, <laughs> right. uh, so he, okay, moves, he moves everyone yep. aboard the executor and moves over to Scarif. Yep. So he did, you know, wants to really force some pressure there on um, on Greg to make a decision if he wants to either recommit, um, you know, more stuff to space or just run away. <laughs> um, so we'll see the beach this turn, I'm sure, from reserve. 
And as a Greg will have to kind of think to himself, content of a move by itself, still be pretty safe if it goes to best spin. If next turn Steve has 11 force, you know, sort of keeping on it. <laughs> Making some more jokes in the chat about. Um... But yeah, blame, blame the game shuffler. Yeah, I blame the game shuffler. Mike, are you still there? No, he's. Uh, it's like he is okay. absent. Oh, I didn't. Oh, yeah, that's this. Greg switching up with insurrection. Yeah, so I, I expect we'll see Greg pull the beach, put some guys at the beach, move Tantum over to best bend this turn. Yeah, I think that definitely I can't be imagine he wants to try to contest the executor right now. No, I don't think he needs to, nor would he want to. I mean, what Steve is going to be looking for are going to be some combination of like binder and stalker, right? Yeah. Some way so you can really try to cover these two systems with starting turret and really force. Do, do force Greg into some tough decisions there. Um, but no idea space is strong. Um, it, yeah, they can it, pull all of it. I don't think Greg is really in a hurry to flip here because no. I don't think there's going to be any strategic reserves from Steve. No. You know, the movement text in the control phase is, is good, but it's not really necessary. Yeah, and the, and the only thing you'd have to target is trample, which, you know, it would be nice to, you know, obviously making your guys defensive value plus two and being able to cancel trample basically will protect you on the ground. But, like, I don't think that Steve is going to commit to ground that early. And, like, three dudes at the beach is still going to be pretty threatening, even if one of them is trampled. Yeah. I'm back. Sorry about that. It's all good. Kind of good conversation in the chat between um, Bill and Jared talking about why we play free ride combo in this list. And yeah, I mean, it, it is really because that occupation and water are tougher matchups. And so, having do we see Bright Hope deployed um, from reserve deck to best pin? Um, this is interesting because obviously, unless you know the beach was the last card and he's just about to play the beach, um, it does signify that Greg is a little bit more concerned about protecting himself in space than getting out that extra activation. Which I think makes sense, honestly. Yeah. It's going to be a long, grindy game, and he wants to make sure that he doesn't leave himself exposed to the space. Agreed. And I like that he's playing the corn here, um, grab the Stardust, because he does still want to get some pressure on um, on Steve, especially because Steve hasn't found Decree yet, so he can be him for two. And corn inside Data Vault can be pretty safe. I mean, he knows that one of those seven cards in hands pulls are two, so if he's at an interior site, yeah. Probably pretty safe from a big beatdown. Not impossible. I mean, he could go like Wolf Yeller and, you know, Tarkin and suddenly. Well, you know, like he's going to be power five, too. Plus that's four. true. He'll be power five, four for five. Um, he's fun to be yeah. like, I, I like that play. Uh, Bill asks about what we think about Tanta about first. I think it's fine. Um, if he has Rogue One, he has another way to play to Coruscant. It matters a lot less now because the Coruscant docking bay. Um, so Blount actually has a place to go even without a ship. And I think you want, if he's going to pull the Tantive early, um, which is obviously a good, the right ship to probably pull because of the activation, you want it on Scarif because you want to be able to shuttle spies between it, play your guys for minus one on it. I mean, you want it in the active area of the game, not just kind of chilling at force. So. I guess Bill doesn't care about my opinion on that. <laughs> <laughs> I can see an argument for waiting to play it or pulling it to Coruscant directly, but I, in general, think that what Drew just said is better. I also don't know if he's playing Profundity or not, which makes a big difference. If he doesn't have Profundity, then he's basically out of ships with passenger capacity early on. I mean, obviously there's Rogue One and the Falcon, but I mean, if, Tant if Tantive is your only capital to be paired with Bright Hope, then you really want it. Yeah. Action. Yeah, I agree. I mean, if it's kind of you're kind of at the mercy of what's in your deck, and you know sometimes you just have to play Tantive to a non or to a battleground. Yeah, good point by Jared, by the way. That, um, now, uh, Greg is Greg is a uh, shield busted himself. All these shields, obviously, are, are good shields to have out, um, but he'll obviously need to find an aim at some point because you don't want to be giving out a free or two 
cool with me. Yeah, uh, CRG. I don't know if he's slow rolling the beak. I think he just realized that Bright Hope was going to be a little bit more important, and he wanted to go ahead and grab it. Um, like Mike was saying, you know, it's going to be a long game, and so that extra activation might not be necessary right now. I don't think the beats is a liability. Like, I think he can still pretty easily defend it, but I think Bright Hope is crucial um, because, you know, he's facing out a strong space deck and Bright Hope and Tantive is, like, the combo that you need to stay alive. Yeah. And I like this Corrin at the Data Vault because Steve has, I mean, unless he just wants to eat two to this, the whole game he's got to find Decree or answer this in some way. You know, it puts a lot of pressure on Steve. It does. Especially since he's oh. down by 10. You, right. know, you can't just eat this two the whole game. Right. Yeah, good call. Okay, so we see Spaceport Docking Bay to Scarif. Interesting. Oh, man. Greg is, like, breaking into cold sweats at being uh, shield-busted now. <laughs> <laughs> if you have Unita and you get to drop your spies, like, for zero to that site. <laughs> I was obviously away for a minute. Um... Did he pull Don't Do That Again just to suspend mob points and then he still had the free executor? Yes. Uh, no, yes, but obviously it, it was, you know, it, it cut off Steve's activation by. I'm not crazy about that decision. Yeah. Um, yeah, neither am I. I guess when you think about it, that's, that's not great. It's sort of like um, in my um, in my game, um, when I pulled um, Golden Rod to like stop Java Space Cruiser versus Jared and Taco Bell was like, "You're gonna want some other shields at some point." I sure did want some other shields. So see Guri aboard the Executor. Probably not gonna be great in this matchup because. Yeah. No idea. Not really known for drawing multiple destiny. I mean, they have still the Kara, but I mean, no idea normally plays stronger when there's only one destiny. Yeah. I mean, a lot of the no idea lists are playing two evac controls and then taking advantage of Bright Hope and Tantive and uh, Torn Far or Attrition with Leia to be advantaged because there's only one destiny. Well, so that's, I'm a little, go that's great. You got to be happy with that turn from Steve, though. Oh, for sure. I mean, I don't think that Gurry adds much to the board at all. Yeah. Um, and so, um, you know, six force for a pretty non difference maker on turn three. Yeah, because because uh, now Greg's gonna be able to retrieve one force with Fluke. Uh, Steve didn't even drain last turn. Yep. And now, now Greg just gets to move away and just takes one at best. But if Steve even drains there, He's yeah, deal after hitting two, him for three, yeah, deal three damage this turn. Start us plus the drain. Still no decree from Steve. Yeah. yeah that's a rough yeah, move for Steve. Yeah, I'm a little surprised. Um, I just I don't think Gurry's a big difference maker in this game, so I'm surprised that he wouldn't want to just draw more cards, basically. I mean, it, it's not like Gurry's going to be the difference between him sticking around and fighting at best spin or moving away. All right, so Steve loses a vengeance off the top. That's pretty big. Yeah. And Stormtrooper Garrison, which is that not was, inconsequential. And, and then that was hard. from hand. Tarkin, not a big deal, looks like probably be able to retrieve it at some point in this game, but... No, but again, if this is similar to the list he's been playing, um, it just doesn't have a ton of characters for one and or ground power outside of the walker, so obviously Steve doesn't think that the garrison's going to be necessary, but if I'm Greg, I'm relieved to see a high power character like that go. CRG is calling a potential gravity shadow here. Oh, Which would be, we did see that, so Greg does have Fujix in hand. He did pull that e Do you think Greg will try to flip here to play around Gravity Shadow? Mm. Flip, flip first and then move? Well, I guess he could just target uh, Bright Hope. Not. You'd have to put somebody on Bright Hope, too, right? You'd have to put someone on Bright Hope, and you'd have to, well, I mean, he has the Fujix. So you have to A, respect Gravity Shadow, which I think I've seen play nicely. I think Steve likes Gravity Shadow. I know he played two in his TO list. Well, yeah. Greg has decided he's not going anywhere, it seems. So. Well, not necessarily. I mean, playing for fun here is only two force. So. That's true, that's true. Yeah, and he can dock Tantive aboard for fun and move. 
All right, so here's the evac control. So you see a bunch of solid characters get on the evac with uh, Willard, Hera, and Cassian. All really good, really good characters that you'll be happy to pick up in battle. So if there is a gravity shadow, we know he has two tricks. So obviously it wouldn't be a heal. Okay, so we do see movement. And that helps him. So he just never found his beach. Or did, obviously he found it in reserve, but the last couple turns was kind of the, the bright. Although I feel I feel like Greg made a mistake here, because he could have just docked Tanta before profundity and saved himself two force. Mm. Yeah, that is just a mistake. Instead he paid six for all three ships. Yeah, if you're going to Pretty, notice, noticeably, this makes him pay one extra. I guess if he's actually concerned about gravity shadow, he wouldn't want to lose both ships at once. But you could just put Luke in the pilot spot of profundity. But he's not flipped yet. True. Sure. True. Sure. You could move the Bright Hope first. To make sure that you flip. Yeah. Then dock. Oh, but he doesn't have a rebel. It doesn't matter. He doesn't have a rebel. There's no rebel in his last pile. So hmm. he yeah. wouldn't be able to cancel the rebel yeah. shadow. But yeah, it's interesting that Greg didn't want to get the beach. So he, you know, part of what Jared's saying in the chat here, he probably does see it as a legitimate liability. And then also he just, you know, thinks these ships are very valuable. Well, now with Blizzard 2 coming out of the docking bay, I feel like Greg could just easily play the beach. Yeah. Well, he can't pull it anymore. Now, it's possible that this whole time Greg's had it in his opening hand or he drew it and, you know, has been holding back on it. Um, I wouldn't be surprised at all for that to be the case. <clears throat> so we'll feel Lauren activate four. Yeah, because if he has the beach now, he's got to be feeling pretty good because he sees, you know, obviously Blizzard 2 at a different site. Um, gives him more of an opportunity to spread out. But, you know, this is a, this is a solid setup for, um, for Steve, too, now. Um, he's got his Drain of 2. He's really going to keep pushing uh, Greg in space. So Greg's going to have to figure out at what point is he going to stop and try to... to hold his ground, or if he's just going to have to keep spending a lot of force, you know, three to five force, depending on which system he's moving from, to run away from the executive. Yeah, the shield busting coming coming to play here. Yeah. Yeah, that do, that, that don't do it again, shield. Um, not necessary. So Greg is really looking for Blount here. Blount would really swing this game back for in his favor, I believe. Agreed. If you can put Blount with another guy at the docking bay, he... Um, and keep in mind that he's not obviously used his um, his saw pulled yet, so he might have been holding off on that until you know maybe if he's found Blount, he puts Blount and saw together at the docking bay, pulls him back, and makes it really hard to kind of uh, move. Notably, Steve is down to three cards in hand. He is only down to three cards in hand. Yeah, so he's he's committed. I mean, he, he's chosen these as his spot. You see him lose a second Paul Tridium from hand. And oh, a decree from reserve, Jack. He has got to be. Oof. Let's see about that. Oh, that's tough. That's tough for Steve. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think at that point, I, I, Steve is obviously saving his force on his turn, but drawing additional cards to be able to ensure that you aren't losing important pieces is sometimes worth the. Uh, foregoing the force. Yeah, I feel like that goes back to Gurry being problematic. <clears throat> I, I agree with you. It's the tempo loss of having played Gurry is now rippling through multiple turns later. Okay, so we see Melchie go to the docking bay, so then maybe this does mean he has Blount. Yeah. It's possible. Or again if he's not if he's just holding back on the beach, either because he's determined that protecting the beach is too difficult or he hasn't found the beach. He might just be there it is. Okay. There's There's Blount. Okay. Steve's really really has to do something about this blonde over here. Could have an EPP mall. Um, yeah, you know, obviously hitting with the <clears throat> hitting or <clears throat> trampling is not a guarantee with 
the objective. Well, he has right. nothing in Lost Pile, so... But Trample is still tough, because he's defense value 4 and the deck with low. That's what he... But Maul would probably be good. Yeah, Jared brings up a good point. I think we were talking about this earlier, too, which is, like, when he put out the Coruscant system, you know, we were saying, oh, you know, Blount can hide in a ship there, but then he had to put out Tantive elsewhere, and we were thinking he was safe in Blount. And then when he put out the docking, we were like, ooh, that's kind of tough. Yeah. I wonder, obviously, there is probably some good strategic decision why he's playing the chorus on docking bay or the Death Star 2 docking bay. Um, probably so he can protect them together if he has to have a ship over there at some point. Probably but, the JCC, that's probably why he plays it. Uh, of course. Well, no, you don't really need But in a deck full of spies, that's Spies, yeah, yeah, yeah. He already have the, uh, that's fair. They already have. Yeah, I don't know why he's playing this docking bay. I feel like playing the Death Star docking bay is just safer. Yeah. Obviously, kind of for, this, for this specific Greg's, reason, Blount going to your docking bay is not yeah. great. I mean, normally the system version always had a strong weakness to Blount because Blount hiding on a ship is particularly hard too. It's interesting here that he basically Greg could choose at any time what Blount would be best. So Greg took a moment to really think about where he wanted to play Tidy Selfie. Basically, I'm pretty trying to figure out if it's going to be a or to protect um, Blount. Selfie. What's his name? Cephalo. Whatever. <laughs> Although it's much funnier. I'm calling him Tidy Selfie from now on. It's much funnier. I, I, in my mind, I've only ever called him Tidy Selfie. Fast. I do. I do Selfie. And this That's is what Roos, I will call him from now on. This is Rue Scott Milshi. That's close. Rue Scott Milshi. Okay. Cephalo. <laughs> <laughs> I anticipate to just see Greg move, yep, and yeah. draw a few cards and say go. Yeah, still no yep. beach. Still no beach, interesting. Do we think that um, Steve is playing another at that viewers can pilot, like Tempest 1 or Blizzard Scout 1 or Blizzard 1? I think he typically only plays Blizzard 2 and Blizzard 4. Yeah, I'd be surprised. It's not impossible. I mean, with the with the XP being flipped. Uh, right? Firepower. I, I was thinking about that. I forgot to mention it earlier, which is um, Steve, who is not shield busted, could grab the firepower here to retrieve that decree. Yes, yeah, so I think Craig um, just doesn't realize that Tantive can go inside of the profundity. It it, it does seem possible that he doesn't realize that. Well, here he doesn't save any force. So it's a question of the next. Well, he does, he saves... No, because you pay one to ship dock. Oh, and yeah. move. Sure, sure, sure. It's only it's only when moving away from Bespin that you'll save. <laughs> no, no, Taco. I've never called him Nelsher. <laughs> COG does also point out that it's possible that um, and because you know, of no secret or aim high on Greg, Steve's able to freely retrieve the decree. <clears throat> yeah, I wonder. I wonder if it went, if Greg mm -hmm. thought about standing his ground at Bespin, or sorry, at Scarab, not moving, so he couldn't firepower back to Kree. Um, I doubt he forgot to Kree, so my guess is he probably did think about it, but it, I didn't forget firepower and thought about it and realized it wasn't good. He kind of I don't think he was in a position to, I mean, he's down by nine power. Right. Even with Bright Hope, I think he had to move away. I agree. I mean, it's still going to be a few turns before Steve can find that right. decree anyways. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's... And it's not like it's going to It's at least open. two turns. I mean, obviously, he'll track it. If he doesn't shuffle, he'll know where it is. But it doesn't even recirculate until this turn. And he activates it's not enough to activate it. Two turns. Right. Before. It's this turn, then two turns of activating, and, and then, then a turn to deploy it. So it's really like four turns still to be on the table. Yeah, and, and it has to it. obviously be in a spot on a turn where he doesn't want to... Um, play anything where it would be. I have to admit, I there's no way I would be tracking it. Is there some random ISB guy that draws from your use pile? There is one, right? Paul Tritium does. Yeah, uh, but he's he at the top. He'd but he's to die. He's already out, yeah. Yeah. He would have yeah. to die. Oh, exact... Tarkin. If he has a relatively empty hand, which he does, he could Tarkin. True. Which, by the way, when we say Steve only has two cards in hand, if one of those cards is Tarkin, then it really... Then he's actually cooking with gas. 
But only 12 force and Wolf Yarn is already out, and obviously there's no. Yeah, I still like Rex Spot here because next turn he's going to be able to retrieve that seven. He's going to be able to track that seven around. He's got nine cards still, in hand. Still has Blount on Coruscant, which is definitely where you want him. Well, he's got nine cards in hand. He's also got three excellent characters on the back. So, yep. Yep. Uh, battles start happening. He's got people to help. Yeah, it's guaranteed things for Greg to be able to counter back with, and they're all three very strong characters. He has requested the action timer be disabled, probably after yesterday. <laughs> hey, Greg has flipped again, so now you can play another ship from reserve deck. A or play action timer's action timer has been disabled, so who knows? Do we see Blizzard four come out? Do we Ooh, see perimeter scan? Perimeter scan. Which now notably, he... Greg has been holding even with the, so he prioritized not getting blown out by Blizzard four or trample over. You could still be blown up by Trample. Shield. At this point, yes. Yeah. The odds of Steve also having the Trample in hand after a two-card hand that can, or three-card hand that also have Blizzard 4 seems very slim. Right. And so Greg was probably playing, you know, he doesn't want him to Blizzard 4 and get Tarkin and then reload that hand. Yeah. Bill saying that he should grab the Premier Scan. I think I agree. I with don't that. hate it. I like that. I would grab it too. Yeah, agreed that it, you know, no idea isn't playing three rescue in the clouds or leaderships or other things you don't need to be grabbing. And that shield busting is pretty pretty bad for Greg. I agree. Also, it means trample is free in the future. For sure. You should definitely grab PCA. Gideon's pretty good here because it gets to download yet another guy. I don't know what else he's gonna have. He already lost Maybe he just has another patrol or another garrison, but he's lost the garrison and the patrol. Normally, this big blue list doesn't have a ton of troopers. He may not even search. Yeah. Well, he knows what's in his deck because he uh, checked the dice. So that that's his trooper. Yeah, it's almost like there was no. no <clears throat> No, Jared, player. he did not pull Trample with Blizzard 2. I wonder if that was an oversight. Did he torn far on Bright Hope? It's possible he's not playing Trample. I'm not certain that he was playing it in the um, earlier rounds of Texas Mini Worlds. I'm going to pull up his deck list, but I'm fairly certain that that was an addition that Greg was made for Greg's version that mm -hmm. Steve was not playing. Okay. Can you also check if he's playing Never Yarnel? I'd be really surprised if he was playing Never Yarnel. I just don't Me think too. this big blue list has room for it. Um, but it may be. But and then, would... okay, so we see nothing. So we see um, you know, some threats added to the docking bay, but no battle, no trample, no Never Yarnel. So Blount and Melshi continue to chill there, facing them down in Gideon and Blizzard 4. And we see that um, the executor moved from Scarif to Espen. And uh, now um, we see some uh, transiting from that spaceport docking bay. We see Paul Tridium move over to the course on top. Yeah, Greg so also Steve, added Torn Far to Bright Hope this turn. And Torn Far is added to Bright Hope. So, a lot of interesting things happening out um, here. Obviously, Steve didn't feel like he had enough to attack the course on docking bay, but he's certainly putting up you know, a pretty substantial threat that's going to force Greg to have to, you know, position himself and obviously next turn the Blizzard 4 game battle again. Need some stuff there. He could dock he could move away for three force, but I don't think that's what you want to do with Blount. But on the flip also side, Steve is down to three cards in hand again. And yeah. so it's like this is a fairly good turn for Greg since he's flipped or yep. back on the zero side. He can pull another ship if he wants yep. to. And this might be the turn where we stop seeing him move away from executive. Yeah, because he's added a tour and far to Bright Hope. So at the very least, he's getting plus two battle destinies and restricting everyone to one. So he's not going to crack executor immunity, but at least he's going to probably not. If, if, if he can get another dude. damage. Yeah, and then obviously with tour and far, if he gets one more dude on there and he's just cycling dudes around in evac control. That's a yeah, if he's got an entry falcon here, that'd be real nice because you add another destiny to power, plus a ton of power in and of itself. So. Right, so, so looking unprotected. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. We know he had Honchu and Falcon. Go ahead, Mike. 
Yeah, because he played the Where's Han previously. Yeah, right? so I mean, he's right. going to be adding. He's got 17 to 19 power, adding a power Destiny. Destiny plus two is thrown far. If he adds one more dude for four foot plotter cycling on EVAC. Um, Jared points it out in chat, and it's very true. This might be where we start to see, you know, really, in fact, space is advantaged now for him, and he could start. Yep. So he's up six on power with a power Destiny. I did go back and look at Steve's list, and I was right. He's not playing, tra- he, at least in the list, he played the Texas Mini Worlds, which was also a slip sliding away list. So it's mm-hmm. not necessarily a carbon copy. I don't, he was not playing with it then. Mm-hmm. And we see Leia now added to that docking bay, which is obviously strong, Greg. Now he's got a couple of strongly positioned um, um, locations. I think, let's see if I can guess correctly. I think we might see a battle at Bespin and not anything at the top. I'm not sure that I would battle either way if I'm Greg, but okay. he is going to battle it in space. Yeah, the only downside to this battle is he doesn't yet um, have a uh, a rebel to loop back on Torin. And uh, oh, and Jared points out something that we overlooked, which is a great point, which is a uh, battle deployment was actually making all of Greg's guys minus two power, and we had Han Chewie back on the back to normal, which is why there was such a big power. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, great call. Yeah. Jared. Yeah. He gets a five to power destiny. Yeah, it's Gurry looking real bad. Yeah. Accounting for the additional power, I do like the battle. I was in my mind it was still a two power advantage to Steve, which makes this <laughs> much less profitable. So we see um thirty four for uh Greg. So Greg did not he chose not to retrieve for drawing Jaron Webb. Yeah, I think it's you know, and now he gets the bright hope. And now he gets the bright hope. So 34 to 22 with bright hope. Oof. And that bright hope eliminates any of the attrition. So we're looking at 34 to 17. And, and Greg, Steve, has, Steve has conceded. Steve has wow. conceded. Okay. I mean, it, that's going to be a tough. This, go ahead. It was done. Yeah. I think this game, I was actually about to say before the battle was initiated, like, I don't think there's a way that Steve can win this game by more than 10, let alone, I don't even think he's going to win. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the thing is, the strength of this ISB Big Blue deck, of course, is space. And so when you're suddenly getting crushed in space, you know, he doesn't have enough ground to contend. Well, well on the bright side, he didn't force us to sit through <laughs> 45 more minutes for an inevitable conclusion. Yes. Um, <laughs> well, a good run by Steve Baroni. Um, you know, obviously he qualified. He was one of the only 12 O's ever in OCS to qualify. And, um, you know, it was just tough. He faced a really good opponent. Shot. Yeah, like it, Greg. Okay. It didn't seem like he was particularly prepared for this no idea matchup. A lot of cars just seemed like they weren't really great for this matchup. I'll say. Mm, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's this no idea deck is tough. But there's a reason why it's been eroded, right? Um, you know, and I actually think that ISB will continue to be one of its strong matchups. I think the erratas to no idea make it so that other decks can contend with it better. So not having the deploy plus two and now it's harder to hit weapons and stalking cancel guys. I think it means like hunt down and AOBs can contend a lot better with it than they used to be able to. Yeah. But with that said, you know, look at what he just look what Greg did here. He didn't even play soft in his deck. You know, like it's yeah. the space in no idea is so strong. Yeah, I think I still think no idea will be a, a strong player. Me too. Meta. I mean yeah they lose the saw pool but that, that just was icing on the cake. It just made this deck so good. But but it's it's, good I think it will still be good, but it's going to be like the right level of power, yeah. if that makes sense. You know, it, I, it totally I think a lot of the degenerate problems and also just Stardust being a natural ping of one and allowing decks to not have to audible to start to create in and of itself is really good for the meta. For sure. I think so, the, the change is nice because there's now ways to fight the deck. Exactly, the problem yeah. with the deck now is like, it could just get so protected and bunkered at the beach that like weapons could never hit him. Saw could cancel blood interrupts. Like now you can at least think about game. So another interesting thing about this errata to new idea is that now decks will feel less inclined to play decree B. Mm. So because of that, do you think that now we'll see more decks like profit and WAP see play because of the potential lack of decree in people's decks? Um, WAP maybe. I think I think it could be a little little boost for WAP. 
I think RAP has its own, if you're not Adam Fletcher at least, has its own uh, weaknesses that um, you know aren't necessarily tied to Decree. Like it wasn't a big player before Decree got errata, but I think it, it could get there um, as a legitimately good deck. Profit, I'm less sure about. Profit might be benefited by the fact that ISB is getting errata, which is so tough for it. But like Court, I mean, recently Court lists have been so strong against Profit. And like if Hunt Down, Hunt Down I think is going to be in for a resurgence with R2 being eroded to basically not be playable. Um, and so like, isn't Hunt Down a terrible matchup for Profit? Like they just, they turn one, drop Vader, and then move over to Mara that, and Dr. E you gave them. They're just creaming you with damage, right? Well, typically I would say yes. Yeah, so well, I don't think Prop is in a great spot regardless. But WAP, WAP could be interesting. So, I'm going to run, run, guys. Thank okay, you. Uh, just real quick, uh, before we start the stream, I just want to let everyone know that um, with Greg advancing, he's going to be playing the winner of uh, Justin Desai and Tom Damon. And y'all can catch game one of that today, actually, at 2 o'clock um, back on this channel. And um, I believe uh, Joe Olson and uh, Dan will have the call on that one. Cool. All right, well, okay. thanks for joining us, guys. Thank you, yeah. Drew and Mike. Yeah, thanks, Jeremy. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, everyone, for joining. And, thanks, uh, guys. Yep, have a good one, guys. Bye. Bye, everyone.